When we're writing CSS for our project, sometimes it can feel like we're just writing the same code that we wrote last time and the time before that. And we're just reinventing the wheel a lot of the time, especially if it's personal projects and other stuff. And well, that's why frameworks became popular, right? Things like Bootstrap or Tailwind, where you're not worried about creating all of that stuff. You're just using what's already existing to help speed you up a little bit. And there is a new player in the game, which is Open Props. Hello, my front end friends, and welcome back to yet another video. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't make you fall in love with it, I'm hoping that I can at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And today we're going to be doing that by exploring open props, which I'm really hoping helps to do exactly that, just to be less frustrated with CSS. And so let's go and check out the page right away. And we can see here we have our open props uh, website. And as they say, it's supercharged CSS variables. So I do like comparing open props a little bit to something like Tailwind or even Bootstrap or something, just because it's pretty much this existing library of code that already exists that we can tap into and use. But there's a really important difference. And that is instead of being a whole bunch of classes that we can use, so you know all these classes have already been written and they're already existing, instead of being set up like that, it's all set up with custom properties. So just as a, a quick example, if we come down, you can see the props for our colors, for example. And, there's, and as you can see, there's gradients, there's shadows, aspect ratios, and more. And there's more in development as well. This is a very new project by Adam Argyle. And there's also different ways of using them. You can see some uh, opacity examples. Anyway, there, it's this big library, but it's a library of custom properties rather than being a library of classes, which means it's very different in how we actually go about in, in using it. So to get started at the very top here, you can go to get started and there's actually a lot of different options. There is this no installation required version using CDNs. You can install it with NPM and there's also a CLI here too, uh, which is cool. So you can customize your build a little bit that way. And if you do go the NPM route and you're installing it locally, there's also a post CSS plugin for just in time props, which is really cool. If you don't know what that is, don't stress too much about it, but I'll probably do a video on that in the future. But today I just wanna look at doing an introduction to using open props in your actual project and a little bit of how it works and some of the different options we have. So I'm gonna stay really simple and we're just gonna to go to this no installation required. And as you can see, there's the different ways to bring it in and you can even bring in like individual colors um, or the easing or the sizes if you wanna focus on more individual packages and not use the entire thing. Um, but I'm just gonna come here to this index one and grab this, copy that. And so let's move this out of the way and go over into VS Code now. And in VS Code, I'm gonna come here in my head and let's go after my title. And I've just set up a very basic boilerplate just with a few things that we can play around with to explore how all open props works. Uh, and you'll notice I'm actually bringing in two things. I'm bringing in open props here and normalize. And I'm actually gonna comment out normalize. We're gonna come back to that in a little bit to explore what normalize is because it's not the normalized CSS that you might actually be used to. It's open props is normalize, which is very opinionated. And we'll dive into that. Uh, but first let's just bring in this here and let's hit save on this and actually we're going to do one more thing uh, and this is where it's very different again you will need your own uh, css file so i'm just doing link css hit tab and because i'm using emmet in vs code it, it links to my css file if you do it like i just did it's just going to do a style.css but that is what i've called my file here style.css and so let's go and look at my page that i have which i have right here in this tab which is just there's nothing, right? We have a, a very uh, generic looking site with nothing going on. So we can do our normal like star. And okay, so let's get started. And if we come and look here, I have this, this my, in my main here, I have this intro section. So we're gonna start there a little bit, or I guess we could start on the body itself actually. And let's start with font family. And so font family. And instead of coming in actually writing a font family, I'm gonna come here and write var, and we're just gonna do font sans. And look, my font's changed. And you go, wait, Kevin, what's happening? And this is because over here, I am linking over to the open props style sheet. If you remember, we just, just did that. And because we're linking to that, if I go here and I go to typography, you can see that he has set up different font stacks for your sans, your serif, and a mono. And so we have those available to us to use. And well, let's come in and change some font sizes too, because there's font sizes and this is the type of thing, if you're not used to using frameworks or libraries, it can be a little bit strange that you're referencing material like this, but if ever you've used anything like that before, 
at the beginning, you do have to sort of reference the documentation a little bit. And the more you use it, the quicker and faster you get every, at everything. So let's come back to here and uh, let's set up a few different things. Let's say that my uh, font, and so we'll come here and we'll say my font size is my var. And so it's just font size and then a number. And I'm gonna go with four because it's a little bit bigger uh, just so we can actually see a change, probably too big for my body. So let's drop that down to a three. And there we go. So that's coming together and it's not looking too bad. And let's come onto that intro that we had. So dot intro and let's come in and add a background here. I'm gonna say background var and let's go with the, uh, we're gonna go with the gray nine, I think, which is really, really dark. And there you go. You can see it, it's come on there. And then we're gonna come in with a color to change the color inside and say var gray two. And hey, there we go, it's coming together. Let's add some padding on this so it looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna do padding block. Padding block is a logical property, which is the shorthand in this case for the top and the bottom um, padding only. So then I can do a var and we have size ones too. So we can say size, I'll go nine, which is pretty big. We get some padding on the top and the bottom. And so you might be going, well, you know, I could just be writing my own. But the nice thing with this in a sense is that we have a lot of things that are done for us. And let's go over to the sizes. And then in the documentation, you can see all the sizes and sort of the, the different sizes you'll get using it and also what they actually reference uh, right here. So you can get a bit of an idea of how you want to be using them. Same with the colors. So you sort of have to, you know, you jump around, you look at a few different things. Uh, one of my favorites is actually the shadows because coming up with your own box shadows is never fun. So let's add a shadow to this area. That's my intro. And we can do our box shadow. And uh, actually, let's do two things. That's my intro padding block. And we're going to do a margin block end, which is my bottom margin. And then we'll do var size nine. And just so we get that spacing. So when I come in and give a box shadow of var shadow, I'll do one of the darker ones. We'll do four. And you can see this really dark shadow comes in under that section. You go, oh, maybe that's too much. I don't like that. I want a three instead. Well, that's a little bit nicer. What if I tried a two just because I wanted a bit more subtle? Oh, okay. I'm going to go with the three. Just having all these pre-built things when you're just trying to do a personal project where you want to get the content there, it can be really nice just to have all of this sort of pre-built for you, right? And so I do want to take a look at the normalized to understand what's happening there. But before we do that, just something that's really important right now is I just have a dot intro or my body selector and I'm just, I'm authoring CSS how I usually would. But rather than writing my own uh, values here, I'm using these pre-built custom properties. So it's like this whole set of pre-built values that I can be using. And that just means I get to write my HTML however I want with whatever naming convention I want for my classes and all of that. It's, there's, no, there's no input on that side of things. You could really set things up exactly how you want on that end. And that I like because it's a little bit more agnostic in terms of how you actually might want to be using it. And of course, this also plays really well with like CSS and JS uh, type things if that's the route that you want to go as well. So like we have lots of different options in how we can use this, which is always really cool. Um, but yeah, one thing I also want to mention here is like right now I'm using all of these. Well, here I did a margin of zero, but everything here I'm using these custom properties for. But if I come here and I look, I have my intro, but then I have these containers here that I want to use because I want to keep stuff from being glued on my page. So how would I actually do that with uh, this open props? So container, and you might be looking in your sizing and looking for something and you might not see something that really fits what you need. And well, that can be a little bit annoying, but we can just come here and just say that we have a width and I'm gonna use a bit of modern CSS on this with a min function. And we're gonna say 100% minus two rem. And then we're gonna do a comma and say 60, I'll do 50 rem just to keep it a little bit narrower. And you'll notice it's it's my content is now limited. And if you don't know this, I'll explain it in one second because I do wanna come on here and just say that my margin inline is auto. And now it's all centered on the screen. And if you, if you don't know this, it's just saying I'm choosing the smaller between these two values here. So 100% minus two rem means at the small screen sizes. Um, if we go into the responsive mode here, um, at these smaller screen sizes, you can see the content's not touching the size. So it's doing 100% minus two rem. So I have one rem on each side because of the margin inline and margin inline is margin left and right only. So it's leaving that space on the two sides. So is it this one or 50 rem, which means if that 100% minus two is bigger than 50 rem, then that limits the size there. So we can do a nice modern approach to setting up a container right here. 
And yeah, let's get out of that responsive mode and keep going. But you'll notice I didn't actually use any of those open props here. I just wrote my own CSS. And that's one of the things I really like about open props is you're given all of these things that you can use, but you're just authoring, they're just tools to help you author your own CSS a little bit faster for these things that you wanna to put together nice and quickly. And so, yeah, a nice a nice quick way to look at that uh, and set things up. But let's, let's go up here and actually, I'm gonna delete a few things here. We're gonna take off this. I think the rest of that we can actually leave. And we'll take off the font family and the font size. We're gonna delete all of this and we'll be, go back to something that looks a little bit like this. And let's come over to my index. And you remember I, I commented out that normalize link. So I'm gonna turn that back on and hit save and things are gonna change pretty dramatically. Where, look at that. We have font sizes have changed, colors have changed, a whole bunch of stuff has just happened. And you might be wondering what, what's going on. And this is the, as I said, the normalize isn't a normalize like you might expect it to be if you're used to like the normalize CSS file that uh, is quite popular. This is a very opinionated normalize that is built using open props that's making a lot of decisions, such as maximum line lengths on things. Um, the font sizes you can see are actually coming through on this. There's some styling on these form elements that I have down here uh, and stuff like that. And there is actually more to what normalize is doing. It's almost like a, um, it's almost like a built in design system that Adam has created using open props that we can he's then shared and that we can use to start our projects off even faster. And if you go over to the documentation, um, in, in here and let's go and just scroll down to this built with open prop section. And he's added a normalized preview, which sort of shows us it's it's basically the documentation for normalize and some of the different things that we get with normalize um, that are coming in here. So there's actually new custom properties that are coming in. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about customizing things a little bit because you might want to use their the normalize because again it lets you start faster, but it might not be exactly what you want. So we're going to look at how we can customize things a little bit as well with it. Um, but yeah, you can look here to get a little bit of a breakdown of um, the default styling that is coming with normalize if you want to take a look at that. And so let's go back over to my CSS file. And actually before we write a line of CSS, one of the important things you'll notice it's a dark background like text, we're in a dark mode. But that isn't because that's the default. That's because I have dark mode enabled on my system. So if you go into the dev tools, and this is in Chrome, I can hit control shift P, which brings up the command palette here, and I can write light. And I'll see an emulate CSS prefers color scheme light. If I click that, look at that. We have the light mode enabled. And then if I want, control shift P and we can go and I'm gonna write dark this time because I wanna go back over to my dark mode. And there we go. And we can go back to the dark mode. Uh, if you're in Firefox, it's actually even easier. There's a toggle in the dev tools that you can hit. Um, but yeah, just to say that it's coming in with a pre-built light and dark mode. And we can even explore that a little bit more. Because what I'm going to do here is on my body, or not my body, let's go to my intro now. And in those docs, when we were looking at it, you might have noticed there is a background of var surface. And there's four surfaces. One is the one that we currently see. Then two is going to be slightly lower contrast. So it's a little bit of a lighter background. Um, and you can go all the way up to four with that. And then we can go back down uh, three and two. And the advantage of using the surface one here is this is coming with the light and the dark mode built into it. So I guess let's go take a look at that actually. Let's open this back up, control shift P, light. And there we go. And you can see that the dark, there is a difference in the background between here and here. It's not very drastic. Let's go up to a three. You can see the background's getting darker here. So this using the surfaces of normalize. This is not part of the regular open props. This is part of the normalize. Um, when you, when we do that, it's going to come in with the pre-built, uh, emulation, or it's going to come in with the pre-built styling for the light and the dark mode, which can be pretty cool. So let's say we do something like that. And then we want to sort of do a little bit more on here. So I'm going to come on this hello. And so that's my H1. So let's just come right here and say H1. And another one that we had available to us is brand. And you can't just write var brand. You need to put it on something. So we're going to say color our brand and then this pink comes in and so yeah we, we can start customizing things a little bit let's do my h1 and my h2 actually h2 and they're both going to use the var brand so we see that pink is coming in in a few different locations but you might want to customize things or break out of how some of this is working even though you're using the normalize so it's very easy to do that 
Because one nice thing with even just open props in general, because everything is just a custom property, it's very easy to overwrite things and to customize things how you want to customize them, which is really nice. And then there's the added benefit of with the normalize here is everything is done with the where selector and a zero specificity. So if you want to overwrite anything in here, anything you do will just, it just overwrites it. There's no fighting, there's nothing going on. So you don't have to worry about trying to um, run into issues. So say you don't like the brand color being this pink color. You can do brand and I can write red. And everywhere that was that other color has now switched over to this really bright red that doesn't look very nice. And I go, oh, I don't like that. Well, wait, open props has its own bank of colors. Why don't I try one of those reds? And I can say red uh, six and see if I like that a little bit better. And oh, it's a little bit more subtle. It's not as in my face. Uh, I think I'm gonna try a lime and see what the lime looks like. And that looks a little bit nicer. <laughs> I like that a bit more. So there we go. I start getting my site coming together nice and quickly. Now there is one thing is because I've overwritten the default color here and I'm actually, let's make this a little bit lighter. I'm gonna go with a lime two just to show you like we have this l very light green coming in. Not a huge fan of it. But because I have put my own color on here, what's happened is if we do go back into the uh, dev tools and we do go into our light mode, we will notice that I can't read the text there, <laughs> right? I'm just gonna leave the dev tools off screen so I can change that back easily after. Uh, but we'll notice that, you know, it, it doesn't look very nice. And what, what happens in these types of situations, as I said, things are very easy to customize. And what we can do is just come in with our own. So I'm gonna do an app media and then prefers color scheme dark. And this color will be reserved for that. So we're gonna copy this whole selector and paste that whole thing in here. So if we prefer color scheme dark, we'll use lime two, but if we, the default, we're not gonna do one for light, one for dark. We're gonna say this is the default and if dark comes on, we'll switch it. So by default, this should actually be lime eight. And look, now I can see it. So because we're in light mode right now, we're just using the default. And if we had the prefers color scheme, uh, come on here, we can then just switch over and you'll notice it's now switching over to the two here because if I didn't have that, it would look like this. So we can quickly come in and just, you know, tweak our colors a little bit for when we do want to build our light and dark theme. And all of this is overriding that brand custom property that we have right here and that we're using right there. And just two more things we can do, and this isn't normalized, this is going back just to the regular open props. Um, I just wanna look a little bit at typography since we're doing the colors of our text. And so let's come on to this H1 right there. And one thing I really like is the font sizes. So font size choosing can also be a little bit difficult. So let's just say we do font size and then they're all nice and easy, font size, and you can choose a number. So let's choose nine and just see what that looks like. Assuming there is one, there probably isn't because look how small that is. So let's jump back over to here, typography section and find those font sizes. Uh, font sizes stops at eight. Oh, I was one off. <laughs> so we'll go and look there and there's the eight and you go, oh, I don't really like that. I want smaller. We can do seven. I don't like that. We want smaller. We do six and you just get this nice scale that you can use and find a font size that for you works well. And one thing that's also kind of annoying is building in fluid type sizes. So there are four different fluid sizes that we can use. And I think the small, the biggest one is this three. And so let's go back into my dev tools and turn on the responsive mode. And now you can see as this gets smaller or bigger, we get a nice little fluid text in there that just sort of works. And there we go. It's super nice and handy. So let's bring, that's my H1. We'll come down, do this one as the fluid two. And uh, of course we need to change this over to an H2 as well. <laughs> uh, so now my H2s are and my H1s are both fluid and the H2 is slightly smaller and you go, actually maybe that should be even smaller than it is now. Well, we put the one on it then. And then we get those and again, they're both fluid and you sort of had this pre-built type system and all these different things that you can use. And again, I've just sort of touched on a few things. There's aspect ratios that you can use. There's one thing that's super cool, the gradients, just because there's tons of nice pre-built gradients that you can use. Um, there's these really cool easings that you can come in and use that have different speeds on them. There's animations on stuff as well. So these pre-built animations for doing different things that you can use in interesting ways. So there's a lot of really good stuff in here that you get to pick and choose and author into your own style sheets. And I do wanna say there is the media queries down here as well, but don't use these uh, unless you are using post CSS. And it talks about that a little bit here because these will be supported in CSS in the future, but right now it isn't currently supported. But post CSS does have the preset environment uh, plugin, which allows us to use some future CSS technology today. 
And if you're curious about how that works and getting it up and running on your system, I have a video where I've covered that and you can watch that right here. And with that, I want to say a very big thank you to my supporters of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Stuart, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.